Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Looks like we've added another spoke to our wheel with last week's passage of the Complete Streets Ordinance. This ordinance reaffirms the city's efforts to provide safe, accessible options for pedestrians, bicyclists, transit users, and motorists. This ordinance guides the city on how sidewalks and bicycles are included in all capital road projects. All of this goes in tandem with, pardon that pun, the city's Bike KC plan that also establishes a clear vision for connected bike networks throughout the city. To learn more about the city's plans to improve sidewalks and bicycle infrastructure, visit kcmo.gov slash kcbikeplan. The health department, along with its partner, Violence Free KC, wants you to take an online survey and we value your input on issues that affect neighborhood safety. Information collected will be used in the development of a plan to help reduce incidents of violence affecting children, youth, and families. This incorporates a public health approach shown to reduce violence in communities across the country. The survey is available at kcmo.gov. U.S. Congressional Representatives and the Army Corps of Engineers join Mayor Sly James and other city and county officials to declare the end of seasonal flooding that affects the residents and businesses near Turkey Creek. The funding for this $32 million project includes more than $7 million from the resident-approved Go KC bonds. Here's a video about it from KC Water Services, followed by news from our other city departments. Protecting businesses and homes along Southwest Boulevard from flooding took another step forward. On December 15th, local and federal leaders celebrated the start of the final phase of the Turkey Creek Flood Control Project. The Turkey Creek uh, flows through Kansas into the Kansas River, but when uh, heavy rains came, the, the flood waters overflow those banks and would flow down Southwest Boulevard, flooding uh, businesses and residences in Kansas City, Missouri. So we're very pleased this morning to be kicking off the final project for the Turkey Creek Flood Control Project. Basically, it's taking all the hillside drainage from uh, 31st Street and, uh, and Roanoke Boulevard and also drainage from um, Southwest Boulevard, capturing that and taking it directly to Turkey Creek. Officials, including United States Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Kansas City, Missouri Mayor Sly James, and Kansas City, Missouri City Manager Troy Schulte, symbolize that reduction in flood risk by tossing away rubber boots that won't be needed so often in this flood-prone area. This couldn't have happened without a strong partnership between Kansas City, the unified government, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We've learned how to build strong partnerships across state lines that are effective and uh, engage in problem solving on complex flooding problems and arrange the funding and all the administration and the real estate that takes to put a project together pretty efficiently by now and uh, how best to work together to get the job done. And it's been a really successful showcase partnership among multiple agencies and jurisdictions. This has been a great partnership from day one. Obviously, Turkey Creek, the majority of it runs through Wyandotte County, and a lot of the cause was upstream in Johnson County, and a lot of the negative impact was downstream in Jackson County. And so when we um, came together with the congressional delegation and with Kansas City, Missouri, and partnered together, we were able to come up with a regional solution. And though the bulk of the money has been invested in the channel in Kansas City, Kansas, is benefiting the whole region. Hi, I'm Audrey with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you news on upcoming shows and events at your city facilities. Planning a wedding? Then you won't want to miss the Kansas City Perfect Wedding Guide Bridal Show. January 6th and 7th at Bartle Hall. Instead of searching and driving all across town, this one show brings together everything you could possibly need to assemble your perfect day. Tickets are $10 online and $12 at the door. Visit perfectweddingguide.com for more information. An RV show for RV enthusiasts. The Mid-America RV Show, January 11th through 14th at Bartle Hall, features the very latest makes and models of recreational vehicles from the nation's top manufacturers. Tickets are $12. Visit midamericarvshow.com for more information. The Brian Reagan Comedy Tour is stopping at the Kansas City Music Hall on January 13th. This comedy act features 
family-friendly humor from one of the nation's highly respected comedians. Taking the stage alone, Reagan blends his often sarcastic take on daily life with plenty of physical comedy you and your family are bound to enjoy. Sailing back into Bartle Hall is the annual favorite Kansas City Boat and Sports Show, January 18th through 21st. Come explore everything you love about the great outdoors and see what's new for the coming season. Tickets are $12. Visit KansasCitySportsShow.com for more information. And if you ever wonder what the boys of summer do in the middle of winter, well, they are at the Royal Fan Fest at Bartle Hall on Friday, January 26th and Saturday, January 27th. The event will feature autograph sessions with current and formal royals, interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programming, and more. To learn more, please visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. I first moved in this neighborhood block in 1974. I became the block captain two years prior to that. When this school first opened up, it was in full bloom for its kids, active, very active. Then the school stayed open all these years, and it started deteriorating, and they turned the school into a charter school. I'm going to hate to see this school get pulled down, but it's the best thing that's going on for right now because it's dangerous. So I think the great thing, we will have something to take its place that's going to benefit the neighborhood. There are different projects where they're talking about what we may bring in here. We do need to build up our neighborhood because the senior citizens that are here now, they are older and, and nobody can take your place, but somebody got to take your space. I want to keep the memories of Francis Willis School alive because the lady that came and did this, Miss Francis Willis herself, that had this school built. She had a vision. She had a vision on something that is going to be lasting forever. She had a vision on education. She had a vision on what could be. There's a lot of people that came from French Willis School and they came on to be great people. She didn't have to do what she did, but she did. And she did it right here on 50 and Garfield. So I want to leave some type of legacy that she, that she gave us and she left us. Quality Hill Playhouse is the place for live performances of music from the American Songbook and Musical Theater. Today we are at Quality Hill Playhouse in downtown Kansas City, Missouri with producing artistic director Kent Barnhart. Kent, thank you for having us here today. Thanks for, thanks for asking me and for being here. And Quality Hill Playhouse um, has been around for a while. Downtown is starting to pop a little bit more and there's a lot of development happening in more recent years, but you've been around for longer. Well, actually this month is our 22nd anniversary. We opened December 5 of, two, of 1995, so 22 years. Mm -hmm. And the American Songbook and Musical Theater, what was it about um, this type of music that you felt was so important to focus the mission around? Well, I have always loved this music. I trained as a classical pianist, but I've loved this music because I think it is our one of the only truly American art forms. And I think it is a universal art form. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, Irving Berlin's God Bless America. He wrote it almost a century ago and now we're, we're singing it at baseball games and it's become our anthem and it's become the thing that bonds us together in good times and bad. And I think the American Songbook um, does that. It reaches mm -hmm. people universally. And um, keeping it alive in live performance is especially important because then um, I, I like to say that you can uh, read a book five times or you can watch a movie five times, but you can only experience a live performance once. Mm -hmm. There's something special about that energy in the room. So I love that. And another important part of your mission is um, working with local, um, local, locals. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> local talent in all aspects uh, of our productions, whether it be actors, singers, technicians, lighting designers, directors, all of those people. Um, our Kansas City 
residents. We, that is part of our mission statement. We only hire local talent. Um, we want to help grow the local talent pool, give them, a, make, have them make a living wage and be able to, to stay here in Kansas City, mm -hmm. but also offer Kansas City audiences well, I love it when people say, are these people from New York? I say, no, the people from New York are the ones who bought the tickets to see them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very satisfying to see people discover, when they come down to see one of our performances, then they, they discover the folly and they discover the Kaufman performing, you know, mm -hmm. they discover everything that's down here and it opens up a whole new world to them. Tell us about the current show. Um, that runs through December 24th. Well, we, our annual holiday celebration, Christmas and mm -hmm. Song, is a combination of sacred and secular, popular and traditional music. So um, we have three singers and I play the piano and sing. Um, and it's a collection of all different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. um, the first act is mostly traditional carols, although many of them are in updated arrangements, more contemporary arrangements. But I also like to include in every show maybe one or two songs that might be new to our audiences. So mm -hmm. in this show, for instance, we're doing a song by Harry Connick Jr. that I think will be unfamiliar to people, but it's, it's a lovely piece called I Come With Love. And um, it's a very uplifting um, holiday celebration, but as y you and I were talking about earlier, because it's only 153 seats, it feels like people are kind of mm. coming over to our living room oh, and we nice. get to share music with them in, in our house, in our beautiful house downtown. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of your beautiful house, you've just had some changes up front. We um, actually added a, a full lobby. We quadrupled our lobby space and added a full bar with beverage service and a private event space. It's, it's very exciting. Now, can you tell us about January? Because that's just around the corner as well, the show in January. It's, we're already working on it. So in January and February, we'll be looking at the way the blues came in with a show called That Old Black Magic, Harold Arlen Brings in the Blues. And Harold Arlen uh, was Jewish and was the son of a cantor, uh, but really loved the theater. And he immersed himself from a very young age. He left home at 16 and began working um, with a lot of African-American artists, and he actually wrote shows for the Cotton Club for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And so the show explores how he melded his Jewish service music and the African-American traditions together to create something that was new to the songbook with songs like Stormy Weather and Blues in the Night and that old Black Magic, uh, Get Happy, Accentuate the Positive, and brought something new into American popular music. Well, that all sounds exciting, and, and you have other shows, but people can check out your website to get Absolutely. tickets. And what yes. is your website? Um, very simple, www.qualityhillplayhouse.com, all one word, qualityhillplayhouse.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that. Um, for those, it's at the QHP. Great. Well, thank you for sharing time with us and your, and your home with us. Well, thank you for coming over. <laughs> and for all that you do. Thank you. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov 
slash NTDF. Hi, my name is Paige Crosswhite. I work up here at Kansas City North Community Center, and today we have Scribble Workshop. It's a monthly toddler parent art event. We have it uh, once a month. It is from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and we have different themes. Today's theme is opposites. Uh, wet, dry, hard, soft, night and day, uh, stuff like that. We do it every month. Uh, we've had dinosaur themed, we've had cornucopia themed, we've got purple and penguins coming up in the next couple of months along with some other fun surprises. Um, we've been doing Scribble Workshop here for almost two years now uh, and I also teach other classes here including youth pottery, art explorers, homeschool classes, and some adult pottery classes during the evenings. Hi, I'm Michelle Edmonds and my kids have been attending art classes with Miss Page for a little over a year now. My middle child, who is seven, does the homeschool art explorers and they work on different techniques in art and she introduces new artists and art terms to them, which is really great. And they've learned a lot and improved as an artist. My oldest, who is 12, has been taking homeschool art studio where she teaches them drawing and sketching techniques. And his sketching has improved tremendously and he's even entered contest and received first place, which has been great. And they've also taken youth pottery here with Miss Page, which they've advanced from just playing with modeling clay all the way up to using the wheel. So they made some really awesome gifts for grandparents and aunts and uncles throughout the year and have improved tremendously as a pottery art. Um, and then my youngest, who is three, does the scribble workshop where Miss Page allows them to play with different types of arts, different textures and exposes them to stuff you wouldn't necessarily think about doing at home like painting with spaghetti noodles. I think what I like the best is Miss Page introduces the terminology and the different artists, which I can give my kids a piece of paper at home, but I don't necessarily know the different art terms that goes with it or all the artists to introduce them to, so I think that's a really great aspect of it. Miss Page is just a really fun, great, awesome art teacher. She's full of energy and you never know what to expect when you come to her class, and my kids absolutely love it and would not miss it for the world. Um, if you'd like some more information, you can go to caseyparks.org. You may have heard recently about Open Spaces 2018, a Kansas City art experience. Next fall, over a two-month period, you'll see and experience art installations of all kinds popping up everywhere across the city. Right now, applications are being accepted and reviewed, and more than 80 local, national, and international artists will be chosen to take part in this festival. The festival takes place August 25th through October 28th in 2018. Although open spaces will feature art experiences across the city, the hub of all this activity will be in Swope Park. If you are an artist or you know of an artist who would like to submit an artistic concept for review, Applications are being accepted now through January 31st, 2018 at openspaceskc.com. It's the holiday season and that means we are heading into the holiday schedule for many things here around the city. Keep in mind that both of the weeks following Christmas and New Year's have a holiday schedule for your trash collection. That means trash is picked up on the day after your regular trash day. Also, during the week following Christmas, that's the week of December 26th through the 30th, that's a no tag period for the city. That's when residents may set out more than two bags of trash without buying extra tags. This does not include bulky items or leaves and brush. And gift wrapping paper is not recyclable, so please put that in the trash. Also, city facilities will be closed on both Christmas and New Year's Day. Now to the big question, what do you do with that raggedy old Christmas tree in the corner now that the ho ho hoing has gone, gone, gone? You can recycle your live Christmas tree on Saturdays for free now through January 13th. The city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers are located at 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Choteau Trafficway, and 10301 Raytown Road. For tree disposal Monday through Friday, there will be a $5 fee per tree. Remember, all trees must be free of lights, tinsel, and other decorations, and proof of residency is required. And if you have holiday string lights that no longer work, you can recycle those at any Mid-Continent Library 
or check our website for a list of other recycling locations that will be open through January 12th. For more information, visit kcmo.gov slash trash. And that does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov slash channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel where you can view our great programs on demand. I'm Chris Hernandez. Bundle up and have a safe and sane new year. Thank <laughs> you.